Hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another session of In Conversation with Bright Minds. And today we have with us Rimjim. Rimjim has, uh, has got admission at Delhi School of Economics and has done her bachelor's from Ambedkar University. So uh, oh. welcome to the show, Rimjim. Uh, so, Rimjim, we would like to uh, start uh, with understanding what made you go towards economics and why did you choose economics uh, for, you know, your bachelor's? Actually, until class 12th, I was a science student. I was uh, enrolled in a coaching for IIT JE. But in the beginning of 11th itself, I realized that JE and engineering are not for me. But because I had taken that coaching and that was a two-year commitment, I still continued with that. It's only towards the end of class 12th when my board exams were approaching that I realized that even if I get into some engineering college, I wouldn't be happy. So I just dropped that idea. I stopped preparing for JE. And then instead I focused on boards. So after boards, I was not, um, I was good with any subject that I could get. I was not like, I didn't have any particular subject in mind because it was such a big switch from science to social mm -hmm. sciences. Mm -hmm. No experience with the social sciences. So I was good with any subject, English, mathematics, even uh, economics, if I could get that. But I didn't expect to get economics, especially in Delhi University, because I was switching from science to social science. So in Delhi University, they deduct, I think, 2.5 to 5 percent of your marks if you make mm -hmm. that switch. So in Delhi University, I could not get, I only got in, uh, English honors and that too in a college that I did not like. But then Ambedkar University, which is a state university in Delhi itself, there in, I think, the seventh or eighth cutoff, I finally got economics. Mm -hmm. And the reason I got economics, I'll be very honest, it's because everyone told me the subject has a lot of potential. I did not know much about the subject. I had never studied it. All I knew was that it has some elements from mathematics. And because I had studied maths until 12, I thought it might be easier for me to switch to something like economics. Mm -hmm. So I took it only because everyone said it has a lot of potential. Uh, but um, thankfully, the subject is actually interesting and I ended up liking it enough to continue for master's now. Got it. Got it. So uh, how is Ambedkar Uni University for bachelors? Uh, how's the faculty and how's the campus? I think in the first semester, uh, I enjoyed it. I thought the in Ambedkar, they have this thing where they offer you a lot of electives. I don't think that's the case in Delhi University, at least mm. from what I've heard friends' experiences. In the first semester itself, I remember I had one course of economics, principles okay. of economics, okay. which is a course, I guess, everywhere. But other than that, I had three different courses. One was for English, one was from psychology, one was like creative expression and art sort of thing. So that was very interesting. When you make a switch from school to college, that is like visible difference that you see. Because in school, we don't have these kind of new things. Hmm. So in college, in the first semester, I really enjoyed that about Ambedkar. But after the first semester, COVID hit. And for the mm. next years, it was all online. So for that, I can't really comment because uh, even though I think my teachers were quite capable, but no one was used to that online mode of teaching. So even for them, it was very difficult to convey at the same level as they would have if it was offline. So for the two years online, I wouldn't say it was a good experience, but that's mostly because of the online nature of the mm. whole course. In the but. final again it was offline and even then I really enjoyed it my professor at the time um, I had one course in economics public economics that I really enjoyed because my professor was very good in fact he is the reason why I decided to pursue masters he was so good at teaching in that one final semester which was only for three months but in those three months he made such a big impact on me that I thought that I should study more in the subject so then I uh, went to masters but yeah Ambedkar I think the campus life uh, it's a very nice campus it's very okay. It's almost like people call it mini JNU because of okay. the way that it's made. there's a lot of trees and the environment and all of that. Uh, as for bachelors, I would say that psychology and English are the better options if you okay. want to pursue bachelors. Economics, I think, at least now that I'm doing masters and I'm interacting with a lot of students from DU and Calcutta University, I would say for economics, the level is not the same. If you hmm. do mix from there, then you have to study a lot on your own. Because at DU and Calcutta University, the teaching is very mathematical. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get uh, at par with that, then you'll have to put in a lot of effort yourself. Because my teaching, at least the course when I was studying, it was not that mathematical. So yeah, that is one point. For English and psychology, I would say it's a good college. Actually, that was my next question. So, you know, a lot of times uh, where we do bachelors from does affect how we perform at our master's or 
you know how we perform at our entrance so uh, you know do you think it actually uh, it it would have been better had you done it from delhi university in preparing in in you know kind of giving the entrance exam or you think it is just self effort which is required okay definitely if i made a huge difference because right now i can tell you at bsc at our orientation on the very first day i think there were like 100 people in the class with me and one of the professors just asked that how many are from non dues and i oh. think not more than like or six people raised their hands and that's out of almost 100 people so i the ratio is very you can tell it's very skewed in favor of people who come from dues not just because they have that 50% reservation thing because mm-hmm. that is also a huge advantage mm-hmm. uh, but other than that also i think if you come from like even if you clear the entrance coming from a non du college even mm-hmm. if you clear the entrance the way of teaching at du and the whole curriculum is very mathematical if you are not mm-hmm. used to that mm-hmm. then after clearing the entrance you will face problems exactly. so that is definitely if you can pursue economics at du i think you should go for that if not then even the other colleges are fine but you have to be prepared to put in more effort than someone from du yeah right i still remember in in our third semester i am not sure if she still is there in delhi school of economics uh, there was this faculty called jv minakshi is she still there any idea i'm not sure not sure okay oh god her subject was so difficult I mean, do you non do you? Most of the people would flunk in the subject, and uh, I did so badly in my mid sem exam. I scored so badly. I was I was so discouraged after that that whatever happens, I don't want to take econometrics for the rest of my life. It was so difficult. And then I remember because it was third semester, you you don't even can you can't take the risk of getting any back, right? It would just waste one of your year. so i remember putting in 12 to 14 hours a day only on one subject because i had to somehow clear that subject it was that tough a subject <laughs> so yes well, i i know how mathematical it is <laughs> i mean yeah that- for me first year was still still a cake walk but that subject just ruined things for me i was like oh god i need to put in so much extra effort now so it was very difficult i can understand that so um so you know coming to the campus life how do you find the campus at dsc and uh, do you actually get time to go to the ratan tata library and sit there for hours or or do you prefer coming back home and studying at home yeah i was going to say there is no campus life as of this <laughs> no campus life because from the moment we got in it's just finish the course finish the syllabus exams are coming up i have never experienced this actually okay. and i was enrolled at madras school of economics mm-hmm. even though the studies are tough but at least for the first few weeks you expect things to be a little light that's not the case at dsc from the moment you step in everyone is scared about exams and it's all finishing the syllabus and study so there is no campus life at such the campus is, is very pretty of course but no one has the time to roam around and see what all the campus has to offer as for the library i personally don't uh, feel comfortable studying there because i prefer studying at my room but it's obviously very crowded a lot of students go and study there so that's definitely a plus it's a beautiful library it's very well maintained and a lot of students do go there but personally i prefer to study in my room got it and how about the tutorials do they still take place every week or how how is it with the tutes and with the problem sets Yeah, yeah. We get problem sets. I think at the end of the week we get them, and then Tuesday okay. and Thursday is for uh, tutorials. And the yes, tutors are really good. Uh, they try to explain it to the best of their capabilities. Tutorials are actually helpful. I I do like that aspect of DSC. Got it. Got it. So what do you think? You know. So for example, there are many students who are from non-math background, right? Let's say they they somehow go ahead and now that you know DSC is CUET based. so in cuet you don't get a lot of mathematical questions so let's yeah. say a student clears a cuet exam but does not have much interest in maths how easy or difficult would it be to survive at the first semester of dsc i think if they are not interested in maths then it's going to be difficult because if they are interested and then that would help them put in more effort if they actually enjoy studying that then it would be easier to put efforts towards that if they are not interested at all then i would personally not recommend dsc i know it's a not exactly a very good thing to say but i feel like there are a lot of good colleges like igidr even though that's also mathematics course then you have jnu also the sis program is very good msc is also very good so there are other good institutes as well iift as well 
so it's not necessary that just because you have cleared the cut off now you have this pressure on you to go into dsc because it's such a well reputed college but mm. i don't think this is for everyone even for myself i had a lot of dilemma before i finally took the decision of coming here because uh, i don't enjoy maths that much but i have done maths for pretty much all my life like 12th i was science student and then bachelor's also i did stay connected with the subject so i knew that i can still manage it but if someone is not interested in mathematics then i don't think bsc should be a very top priority for them for them you got it so you know one more question that i have is many students so so now because dsc is C, uh, cuet so many students ask me whether uh, they should be doing the dsc past years uh, for cuet exam is that going to be useful or not so did you find doing the dsc past years useful for the cuet exam that was given for the exam it was not useful mm-hmm. but you don't have to worry about just the exam after you clear <laughs> and i hope that everyone does after that you have to survive at dsc and for that it's essential that you are familiar with those things the mm. dsc papers are the bare minimum for having a two year degree at dsc even mm. is i did not do isi because i had no interest in going there but even if isi if they can do iit jam all those papers will help you get familiar with the whole uh, mathematical aspect of the course so for the cuet exam itself they are not going to help they are of no use at all but for once you get into dsc then they are going to be helpful so True. they should be accustomed with the exam paper yeah yeah few of my students i i know who got into iit you know post they got into iit they said ma'am uh, we would be requiring your material now because now in the first year we need to kind of get back to whatever was taught during our entrance exam preparation so i i truly agree with that so arim ji what suggestions would as a last question what suggestions would you like to give for any aspirant sitting for dsc exam what should they be preparing for to clear the cuet exam okay so first i would say that get familiar with all the foreign author books that we usually okay. use ian blankert all of that you should do i think you should do that for the entire year but towards like the very end of the year for like the 3 4 months before the exam Uh, at that time i will tell what i did uh, there is this indian author called h l ahuja he has books on microeconomics and macroeconomics so actually when i was seeing the cuet syllabus i saw the syllabus itself the level of questions is not tough it's just the syllabus is very extensive there are so many topics that we never study even in college they don't come up so those cause problems so h l ahuja for micro and macro there are a lot of topics directly from the syllabus that are mentioned in the book and the book is very easy once you have read the foreign authors that book is very easy to read i wouldn't say to use it as a base for your economic learning the vt uh, and blankard are much better but after you are done with those books h l ahuja and then uh, for indian economics i used ramesh singh that's also a good book not just for cuet but for msc gokhale etc wherever indian economy is coming and then for uh, aptitude i did rs agarwal that's also quantitative maths that's a very good book hmm. so if you do these books they are once you are done with the other foreign author books these books will be very easy they won't take that much a uh, time it's just that right before the exam i would recommend focusing on the indian authors more instead of the foreign ones because cuet these will help a lot yeah got it and uh, you know uh, always student find uh, remembering indian eco very difficult because uh, it comes from anywhere and everywhere right so any suggestion in particular for indian eco how should they be approaching that part not really because indian eco is something that i had given up i was like if i if the <laughs> familiar then i did it otherwise one suggestion is to not attempt it if you are not sure like mm. there is no guessing in indian eco because mm. that's going to be the negative marking but uh, i think if you solve like i also solved ugc net questions uh, actually at our time someone made this telegram group where they were uploading 50 questions per day from past year ugc net papers so they uploaded like 500 questions in total so uh, whichever questions were very commonly asked during that time or which topics were very commonly asked those i paid more attention to i also did current affairs and all of that but for mm-hmm. last year i don't think anything came from the current affairs but mm-hmm. that is one topic that they can focus on gdp and all of those statistics but other than that indian eco is <laughs> is true so uh, you know uh, if you analyze the paper for example i'll tell you about iit only 8 marks are are assigned to indian eco out of 100 so you know even i tell people that focusing on 8 marks against the trade off of other 92 marks which which are sure shot from the syllabus it is very difficult to know what comes in indian eco so i i 
you know, whoever clears the exam, I, I do ask them, how did you prepare for Indian Eco? If you have any strategy in mind, like, for example, I know five year plan will can come in exam, deindustrialization can come 1991. But still, if you have something in mind specifically, I really want to know all from all my students who have cleared the exam, what they did to kind of clear that part. So agreed. It is it is very abrupt, right? <laughs> Sometimes it is literally anything that they can ask. Yeah, one more thing I forgot to mention, the government schemes these mm -hmm. days, that is also an important topic. Important. Yeah, for current affairs, if you just go through that, the budget and then the government schemes and all of that. Yeah, true. Like, for example, G20 is, is really the one topic that can come, right? Yeah. Okay, so just one last question, Rimjim, that I have for you. So uh, once you're into Delhi School of Economics, like for a lot of times, I remember during my orientation, our, our professor told us that Aditya Bhattacharya ji, he was our professor and he told us that, uh, you know, you, you have only done the easier part of getting into D school. The difficult part starts now of surviving. So any tips you have for the students who enter DSC? What would be their survival, you know, kit or how do they survive once they enter DSC? It's only been one month for me, so I can't speak very much on that. But for me, I'm trying not to focus so much on surviving. Like, I'm just, I'm going along with it. Like, whatever comes or however much I can study, I'll do that. I won't focus so much. I mean, of course, because everyone keeps talking about it. So many people fail. The fail ratio is this. <laughs> yes. I've never experienced something like that. So, I mean, it's just, you know, one thing I would say is to make good friends. If you have yeah. people who understand your struggle and if they are going to help you with the studies, you can help them and they will help you. That that helps a lot. Other than that, it's only been one month, so I can't say. Maybe after one year, I'll be more equipped to answer this question. Yeah. True. So, so, you know, sometime once you've cleared your first year, you should definitely come back and tell how you survived that year and what were the problems you faced and, you know, how students can deal with those problems yeah. because DSC is really, really, you know, a difficult thing to go through. And mm -hmm. you, you correctly pointed out making good friends is very important. In my phone, I still have the notes of one of my friends of international trade. She made such beautiful notes. I still have the screenshots of those in my phone. So yeah, that is really useful <laughs> in the, in the event thing. Okay. So thank you so much, Rimjim, for your time. And I know, it is, it is very difficult to take out time, but, uh, you know, you took out time to tell students what should be done to clear DSC. And I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much.